Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of The Daily. It's Monday, August 29th, here with Greg Lawless. I'm Nick Fershaw. Greg, we've uh, weathered the storm here we in have, New York. Yes. The uh, MLSsoccer.com offices are all and well here on Monday morning. Uh, a very sunny weekend, though, for the Western Conference here in MLS. Uh, let's start with Seattle. A big win over Columbus Crew, the best team in the East. A 6-2 win out in Seattle. Lamar Nagel does the uh, heroics. He does, and he gets a hat trick on this one. They set all kinds of records in this match for Seattle. The most goals they've ever scored in one game, six. The most they've ever scored in a half, four. And Lamar Nagel with the first hat trick scored by the Seattle Sounders at home. So a, a pretty impressive performance all around from the Sounders who, if they can continue this form, will start to put some pressure on the LA Galaxy for top in the Western Conference. Well, good news for the Sounders there, but some good news for the Columbus crew too. And Jeff Cunningham, now the all-time leading scorer in MLS. We've been waiting for this. Uh, Greg, 134 goals. He gets it from the penalty spot to move ahead of Jaime Moreno. Yeah, he does. And congratulations to Jeff for that. Obviously, he's been scoring for so many years here in MLS. Everywhere he goes, he gets goals. This one, of course, uh, getting it from the penalty spot. We saw earlier in the season when he actually had a chance to do it and Mendoza took the ball away from him. On this day though, Mendoza was off the field by now so he didn't have a chance to take it away. So, But 134 goals, very impressive, passing Jaime Moreno as the all-time leading scorer in MLS. An interesting note for this, Jeff Cunningham was talking about he was potentially going to undergo surgery which was mm -hmm. going to cost him a few weeks for the Columbus crew. This was one of his last games before that potential surgery. He gets the record, so congratulations to Jeff. Uh, one other big game for the Western Conference, that's FC Dallas. They go to Livestrong Sporting Park, they get a 3-2 win over Sporting Sporting KC, they do it the hard way, Breck Shea's the hero. Well, considering everything that Sporting Kansas City had been doing up until this point, they were riding all kinds of streaks, doing very well, had jumped into second place in the Eastern Conference, and they were up 2-0 with about 20 minutes to go, and all of a sudden, it all collapsed. And yes, Daniel Hernandez gets the first goal for Dallas, then a red card to Teal Bunbury, and finally it's the Breck Shea show at the end. He gets down the left side twice, whips in perfect crosses, and they put him away. Bobby Warshaw with the winner at the end, his first MLS goal in stoppage time to win it in Kansas City. This is a Dallas team that has really shown the resilience all season long, and this shows it again. Mike on Santos gets the uh, late equalizer, and for Sporting Kansas City, they're left wondering. Uh, we heard Graham Zussi say after the game that if we can't close these kinds of games out, we're not a contender. So some tough news uh, mm -hmm. for Sporting Kansas City. As for FC Dallas, they're back at it this week. They're up at Seattle in the U.S. Open Cup semifinals on Tuesday night. Well, Greg, we know what this means to Seattle. They've won this thing two times in a row. What do you expect from this? Well, game? you can already see, actually, Actually, over the weekend, Seattle rested a couple of their guys. Alvaro Fernandez did not start, as if Ziggy Schmidt was saying, you played in midweek in CONCACAF Champions League, did very well down in Mexico. Let's hold off now, because we want to make sure we get into the final of the U.S. Open Cup. So it's very important for the Sounders, of course. U.S. Open Cup has been since they started. Now Dallas, what can they bring to this? Well, they do have some news. The move to Blackburn for George John that we've been thinking about, reporting about, and contemplating this whole week has fallen through. He will not be joining the EPL side, so he will be available for them. That will bolster their back line, especially considering Zach Lloyd will not be there. So this should be a great game up at uh, Starfire Complex in Seattle. And on the other side of the bracket, seemingly a, an easy path for the Chicago Fire. They've won this thing mm -hmm. four times before. They're up against the Richmond Kickers, really the only underdogs left in this tournament. Chicago Fire have played well in the last couple of weeks. This would definitely uh, maybe save their season a little. Yeah, and, and two wins in a row now for the Fire in the league. So if they can get past Richmond, get into the U.S. Open Cup, that would be big, I think, for them also, just not only for their confidence, but if they can actually win the U.S. Open Cup, remember, now you're in the Champions League. Now you're starting to play yeah. in the, with the big boys again, and the fire haven't been there for a while. Frank Klopas has them doing well right now. We'll see if they can continue that against the Richmond Don't kickers. forget, Frank Klopas won a U.S. Open Cup yep. with the Chicago Fire. He knows what it means to that franchise. Well, that does it for us, this latest edition of The Daily. Make sure you log on to MLSsoccer.com for all the latest headlines in MLS and the U.S. Open Cup coverage as it gets underway this weekend. And check out the latest edition of Extra Time Radio. It's going to come out on Monday, Greg. We're going to start talking about that big U.S. Costa Rica friendly on Friday. You can find the latest edition of ETR on iTunes and Buzzsprout.